Hello everyone, welcome to this new video about MLflow. Today we are going to keep working on login models. Um, in the last video we saw how to use MLflow.autolog to enable automatic login. Um, with, with this method we were able to log metrics, and parameters, tags and the model uh, without using any MLflow.log statement. Um, in today's video, we are going to look into uh, this new method called LogModel. Um, LogModel, let's say, allows us to uh, allows us more control over the things that we are logging. In order to access this method, we have to specify the framework that we are using to train the model. In Scikit-Learn, this is also called as um, the flavor. So basically the flavor is the framework that we are using in our project. So for example, we also have a mlflow.tensorflow flavor lock model, for example. Uh, we also can have, let's say, uh, sgboost framework dot lock model and so on. But in our case, since we are using scikit-learn to train the model, we are going to use mlflow.scikit-learn and just then we can call the method lock model. Now, now lock model, let's say, takes uh, several arguments as we can see here, but the minimum ones are the scikit-learn model. In this case, is the object that we are training here, rfc.fit, and the artifact path. And this is basically the name that um, this artifact will have in our MLflow UI. So let me execute this code and show you what happens python 12 login models now let me go to the interface here we have a new run and here we can see the new artifact called random forest classifier uh, in which we can find a ml model and this is basically the file that mlflow uses to to store information about the model here we can see that is using the scikit-learn flavor then we have uh, several files that are being used to specify information about the environment in which the model was trained. Um, so basically this is important because um, it will allow us to uh, to reproduce this experiment. And finally we have the model.pickle file. So the disadvantage with this method is that we don't have any metric calculation of parameters. So if we want to add, let's say, metrics or parameters, we have to use mlflow.log statements, something like mlflow.log metric, and we also have to calculate these things. So in addition to this log model method, mlflow.scikit-learn also allows us to use autologging. Uh, we can use, for example, mlflow.out, sorry, scikit-learn.autolog. And this is basically similar to this um, statement. The only difference is that here we are specifying that the flavor is scikit-learn or the framework that we are using to train the model. So let's run this code again. And let me show you the interface. I think that is this one maybe. Uh, yes, um, here we can see that now mlflow.scikit-learn.autolog um, enable uh, automatic logging. Now we have, let's say, more information about the model and the experiment, like metrics um, that are being calculated by mlflow, uh, parameters, um, images that we can use to evaluate the model performance. Here, for example, we have precision recall curve, training ROC curve, and so on. So this is very useful because uh, it allows us to log uh, several metrics and parameters automatically without specifying any MLflow log statement. But uh, uh, with MLflow.log model, uh, with this method, we have basically more control over the things that we are logging. So this is everything for this video. Um, 
thanks for watching it and i'll see you in the next one